Hey everybody, Al Hodges here. Uh, that's Frank, Frankenstein. He's a 92 Jeep Wrangler YJ who had his 2.5 liter taken out and a 4.0 liter with an AX15 transmission put in it. Um, he's a bit of a Frankenstein. Uh, been having some real issues. I had to replace my clutch. Now this, this system has got the internal clutch, which everybody has problems with. I could not find online any kind of decent solutions to the bleeding system of it. There's just a slug of air that is in one of the two high points in the system. The first high point is right there on the master cylinder. If you can see it right there, that's a high spot. And so there's always a slug of air wants to be in there. The second problem is on the concentric clutch on, clutch on the internal slave cylinder just before the bleed valve there's another high spot and so unless you can move a large volume of fluid through at a time you're not going to push that slug out now we tried the typical thing with my wife in the jeep i would crack it she would slowly push it i would seal it and we'd check every every couple of pumps and check the reservoir just could not get it i get partial clutch but i couldn't get full clutch ground like hell trying to go into reverse and was really hard to get into first gear um, tried a bunch of different things. I bought a, uh, a, a big syringe to force fluid up from the bleed valve up to the master cylinder. And I took an old master cylinder cap and modified it so that there was a hose coming out of it le leading into a bleed bottle. But the problem is through that tiny bleed hole, you can't push enough fluid to offset that plug. You gotta move a high volume. So here's what I came up with. And I'm gonna show you my system here. This is a Home Depot deck and home two gallon with a uh, relief valve on it. The hose that goes down in it. I cut off the, the hose. I modified an old master cylinder cap with a brass nipple and a brass nut and two rubber washers to make an airtight seal and i put on the universal clamp to make sure it was nice and tight and then i filled this with uh, some dot three brake fluid from o'reilly here a little plug for o'reilly if they want to help me then i took the empty container drilled a hole in it for the tube that runs all the way to the bottom and a relief hole and a wire so i could hang it up so it wouldn't fall over then I added, also from O'Reilly, I got this vacuum check valve. It's a one-way check valve. It's designed for air, but it worked great for this application. A short section of hose here. This is one-eighth poly hose. I got one-eighth because it fits really, really, really snug over the bleed nipple. So, after I had it all set up, I took this guy here. Let me take it out here. Pardon the Blair Witch Project stuff here. Put it up on top here. You'll want to remove your fender, your strut bar here. This will be a half inch, two half inch wrenches. Just got to loosen up this 916 wrench. You guys know how to do that. Get that out of the way. It's just going to be in your way because you're going to want to get this guy screwed on there in place. Now, the other modification that I did on this is this is the old master cylinder cover. And I took the gasket and cut it off so that it, so it, it make an airtight seal, but I don't have that, uh, that vacuum gasket in the way. So I put this on here, put my bleed bottom bottle down at the bottom, pump this up with pressure. Now, I've got a I've got a full uh, quart of brake fluid in here, and of course this is full of air. So when I pumped it full of air and I went downstairs and I cracked the bleed valve, started pushing fluid, pushed it pushed out that air slug, pushed a bunch of fluid, and now because I've got this pumped up with pressure, I was able to go into the cab and physically pump the clutch. As you physically pump the clutch. The pressure in here is forcing a large volume of, of fluid through here 
and, and you keep pushing and I kept looking down below where my bleed bottle was and all of a sudden I saw a huge plug of air. That's all of this air that's in this line right here. And whatever air was in the top of my reservoir, pushed it through, kept pumping, kept pumping, kept pumping, kept pumping until there was nothing but clean fluid coming through. And on the reverse, when you pull back up on that clutch, that check valve is keeping air from coming back in. So it just kept pumping and pumping and pumping until that clutch felt really firm. And then I crawled underneath, used my uh, seven millimeter wrench to close that valve, came back out, gave a couple of pumps to my clutch pedal. Voila, all the air is out of my system. So then all I had to do was relieve the pressure here, put a rag up underneath, the master cylinder here, undo this, get it higher so that it would flow back into the bottle and uh, and then top off my, re my reservoir here. Actually, I took a little bit out because there was too much in it. I took a little bit out and then put my, uh, my cover back on. Uh, I've got clutch now. I've got the clutch that I was, <laughs> I've been a week at this. So anyway, that was my solution. This is a lot cheaper than buying one of those, uh, you know, if you're a mechanic and you're doing these bleeds all the time, then you'll want to have uh, the, the, the system that's built for it. But this actually worked for me. Um, and now I've got, uh, I've got clutch. And by the way, I replaced my original clutch line. This is the advanced adapters clutch line that is here. So this goes down. I don't have any of that quick connect bullshit down there. Um, so anyway, that's what I did. I'm going to post this and hopefully it'll uh, help somebody out.